Hey, what's up, you guys? Sorry for that. That will happen on like all the beginnings of my new videos because I'm using Sorry for the Loudness upstairs. If you can't hear that, my mom's vacuuming. I'm using now my webcam, which I'm using now because my camera's broke. So, gotta get fixed that soon. But uh, I haven't made a video on this account in a while, so I thought I'd make one. And that is, this is like my football channel, but uh, here's my thing I'm gonna talk about, and that is Leinert's possibility. Well, Leinert got cut by the Cardinals, so he is going to a different team. He isn't going to, he's not, he says he wants, I've, my, well, my sources say he's gonna go to the Giants, and I have no sources. I just think that he wants to go to the Giants. Giants, but. One thing I kept on thinking in my mind, who is the one main team that you think would start you and actually give you a fair chance? That's my favorite football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fournette, Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, so that means you're going to sit down, drink some coffee, and get to know Treeb a little better because it's story time with Treeb, and it's the 11th year anniversary that Treeb from Treeb Talks has been on YouTube, so what better way to celebrate that than to go over everything that Treeb has done on this website. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I am Treeb from Treeb Talks, and this is story time with Treeb, episode number two, where... The name and where the guy came from from Troop Talk. So, ladies and gentlemen, in order for us to talk about my YouTube journey, we must go all the way back into the beginning, December, I mean, November of 2007. YouTube in 2007 was completely different than the YouTube that we have today. The YouTube we have today. Anybody can make it on this website. You just got to find your niche. You got to find the people that you're trying to appeal to. And you can make money. You can make a career off of YouTube. Back in the day, however, 2007, 2008 region, that wasn't the case. You were making YouTube videos for fun. You were making YouTube videos to show your friends at school. Like, hey, I made this YouTube video. Isn't it funny? Like, no one was making a living off of YouTube. Like, that wasn't why people... We're making YouTube videos, and I'm not saying that that whole concept is ruining the website. In fact, I think it's getting it better because it's giving people uh, more opportunity to make money off of their content and to make money off of things they enjoy. Now, the reason I say that is because in 2007, when I first made my uh, YouTube account, I was, at the time, I was seven years old. Was I seven? So it was in 2007, so I was officially 11 years ago, currently 19. I was 8 years old. I was 8 years old when I first started making YouTube videos. My dad, um, you know, me and my brother found YouTube. My dad actually made this YouTube account originally called Batista B619. Now, if you've been here since the Batista B619 days, which I don't know how many of you guys have been, if you have, leave a comment down below because I'd be interested in talking to you, but... Batista B619, basically, I was a big, 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 big wrestling fan back in the day. My favorite all-time wrestler was Dave Batista. And the B standing for Bomb 619 obviously, meaning uh, Rey Mysterio. Those were my two favorite wrestlers. So basically, when I first made my YouTube channel, what the whole premise of the YouTube channel was going to be when I was younger was me playing with my wrestling uh, action figures, doing different things, my dad editing them and posting them on YouTube. So my first ever YouTube video that I ever posted uh, on the website. And you know, I wish I had access to that somehow so I could throw it in here. You are going to see some throwback tree videos though. Uh, not not uh, any wrestling figure related ones though. So I would play with my wrestling figures and I'd basically come up with a storyline um, on what they're doing. The first thing I did was that they were in class and I made Vince McMahon the teacher and all these other wrestlers that I had were students and they were acting up and all this and all that. And, you know, I had fun doing it. My dad had fun editing it. 
Um, that's one thing, dude, man, my dad, I can't tell you enough for what my dad has done for me, for who I am today, and um, what he's done for me as far as open doors of opportunity, and to tell me, you know, and to lead me in the right direction, you know, my dad, I can't say enough for how much my dad, my father has done for me, and it's, you know, it's rare these days to have a father that uh, is even there for you, and you know, that can really take you under his wing and teach you life lessons. Um, not a lot of people are getting that these days, and I was lucky lucky enough to uh, grown up with a dad that uh, supported me with everything and really helped me uh, get off my feet and do what I wanted to do. So that was my first stint on YouTube was just basically all professional wrestling related. If I wasn't making that wrestling figure class video, I was making videos about the WWE. And one of my most popular videos, I will never ever forget, I was 8, 9 years old. I was wearing a John Cena t-shirt and my brother recorded me uh, down, downstairs in my basement. And I was just going off on John Cena. I was like, John Cena sucks. John Cena can't wrestle. And here I am, just oblivious as shit that I'm wearing a John Cena t-shirt as I am saying all of these things and that video actually blew up a little bit that video ended up getting seven six thousand views like people were eating it up that this kid is talking so much shit about John Cena because back in the day John Cena was supposed to appeal to the kids and the kids were supposed to love John Cena but here's this kid um talking shit about him and you know most of the comments weren't very nice when you're young Trolls are going to attack you because they know that you're easy to get to. And that's kind of what they did to me. And I was definitely easily brattled. I was like, man, fuck you guys. You know, yeah. and you know, I would, I would cuss online and I wouldn't spell words right. And it was, it was just a shit show. And then after that, my dad and my mom were like, you can't go on YouTube anymore. That's, you're done. You're done. You can't make YouTube videos anymore. So after that. I stopped making YouTube's for, YouTube videos for a while, a long while, um, until I got until about the sixth grade. So I was like about 12 years old at this time, and I told my mom, I was like, hey, I want to make YouTube videos again, is that cool? She's like, I totally forgot that I even told you that you can't make YouTube videos, go ahead, do whatever you want. So I made YouTube videos, and basically my premise was vlogging, but it wasn't vlogging like how vlogging is today. It was more kind of like what I'm doing now, like I was sitting down. I would talk about things, I would tell stories, you know, all this and all that. And then, and then, when I was in 6th, 7th grade, I went through a huge juggalo phase. Don't make fun of me, dude, but like, ICP, that was my saviors. My lord and saviors, the insane clown posse in the 6th and 7th grade. And that's what I made videos on, was juggalo related topics. So you go from two completely different things, being young and talking about professional wrestling, to being young and talking about ICP and juggalo related things. So my big thing was, was when I came back on YouTube, what I was going to be doing was the biggest juggalo on YouTube competition. And what that was, was I was going to ask a question every week and people were going to answer in the comment section and then, you know, keep tally, keep score. Whoever wins is going to end up being the biggest juggalo on youtube now what i would do is i'd go on every single icp video whether that be like on their main channel with a main music video or even just like lyrics videos and i was like hey come over to my youtube channel we're going to be doing our biggest juggalo on youtube competition these are the prizes this is this and this is that and all these juggalos man they got so mad they're like no one juggalo was bigger than the other we're all family whoop 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 yeah don't fucking listen to this kid he's a fucking joke I took offense to that. I was really upset. I went out there. I did it anyway. That was my thing. And I was getting hated on a lot. And back in the day, um, they don't really do it anymore. They really don't. But uh, you used to be able to go on YouTube videos. And there used to be like a little thing before the comment section that would be video responses. And most people would make their fucking like, their most viewed videos would be video responses to other videos. So I kind of jumped on that bandwagon. So what I did was I went on this guy's video who uh, was talking about how ICP jugglers are gangs or whatever. And I talked and I basically said, no, they're not. You know, whoop, whoop, we're all family and this and that. <coughs> and then, and then 
Those two videos combined got 150,000 views. And, you, you know, you're thinking to yourself, true, that's awesome, 150,000 views, man, congratulations. No, because it was, like, bad. Like, I'm saying it probably got 5.9 dislikes and 35 likes. And all the comments were just bagging on me, trashing on me. And I would still go on YouTube every day, read every single comment, and let it get into my head. And, you know, as a young boy, you're like, that's not the shit you need. Like, that was kind of bad for me, like... I entered 7th grade and I really got bullied and I let things get to me. And I think a big part of why I was like that in the 7th grade was because of, uh, you know, those videos. Those videos that uh, people would pick on me, people would say things in the comments and I'd get upset about it. Now that I'm a little older, almost 20, going to be 20 in now 11 days. Um, you know, I don't let those kind of comments get to me. I don't let people on the internet bug me. But back then when you're that young, you know, you're obviously gonna let things get to you and um that was just one thing that uh i let get to me so that was the another another big stamp was my juggalo phase you know i whoop whoop what's up you know I, that was my thing that's what i would always say i'd be like whoop whoop what's up two speed 619 here and it was just garbage like all my videos in that stint were garbage and my webcam if you think this camera's bad ladies and gentlemen you should see my webcam back in the day my webcam back in the day, man, it would autofocus. It would autofocus on my face and it'd be all blurry, and then it would get back to normal. It was terrible. Terrible, terrible webcam. So I think this is the part of the video, ladies and gentlemen, where I kind of sit you back. I let you enjoy um, some original Treeb Talks content from when he was a little boy. Now, the first video I'm going to show you is... Um, back in my juggalo face so i will be wearing an icp hat so don't even at me um i think the video i'm gonna i'm looking for it after the fact i record this but i think the video is gonna be me talking about fantasy football i think that's what it is and um i will show you that video and then there's another video that is my original reaction to the jaguars cutting david garrard it's classic it's hilarious Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Young Treep. What's up, guys? It's Jax Highlights here, and um, first video showing my face on this channel. And yeah, I am here to tell you guys my fantasy football players and starters. Alright, so the league I am in is NFL Managed 481171. You know, it's on NFL.com, and yeah. <laughs> And this is a Red Sox chain. Not only am I a diehard Jags fan, I'm also a diehard uh, Red Sox fan. And I got Patriots background because I'm in the shittiest room. I'm in my brother's Patriots room. In fucking deep. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jag Highlights 20 here. And I just got home from football practice. And I just found out that David Garrard has been released by, I mean, he got cut by the Jaguars, even worse. But when he got cut, now Luke McCown is our quarterback. Now my take on that is I just, I don't want Luke McCown to be our quarterback. I want Gabbard to be it. He kind of, I know he hasn't had that great of a preseason start, but he definitely probably, he I think he's the next leader for Jacksonville. And... The fact of the matter is, is I look no different. Like, I look the exact same. Like, I just grew up. Like, you know, I just I just got bigger. Like, that was it. My voice kind of changed a little bit, <laughs> I would say. I would say that my voice uh, got a lot deeper. So, now after you've seen all those old embarrassing videos, um, the step after the Juggalo thing was Jaguar YouTube. That was when I got into the Jags when I was 11, 12 years old. And what I would do is, like, I, I picked and choose games that I would preview and I would recap and I would do that. And, you know, I wouldn't do it consistently week in and week out. And that's kind of where I left off was on the Jaguar YouTube types of things. Like, I would recap and preview certain games. They wouldn't do too good. They wouldn't do too bad. But at one point before, there was a UCF Jaguar, like, <laughs> you know, in, like, 2013, 2014. Like, your boy, like, there wasn't a lot of Jaguar YouTubers. Like, I was probably the biggest one. 
and I only had like 230 subscribers at the time. And you know, people were watching my videos, people were enjoying it. Uh, I'd get messages all the time about why I stopped making videos or why I'm not doing this consistently. And you know, I just, I just didn't. You know, I was in high school, I was in junior high. Uh, you know, both those things, and I just, I just didn't have time to make YouTube videos between my own football, wrestling, and high school. So now in comes why I came back in May of 2017. I deleted all my YouTube videos. I said I'm done with YouTube back in 2015, 2016, somewhere in that area. And I was like, man, I'm never going to make another YouTube video again. It's nothing against the site. It's not that I don't enjoy it. It's just that I have to focus on things and I need to make sure my future is pointed towards the better. So at the time, um, I was a senior in high school. And my two things were I was going to either go to college, get my degree in communications, or I was going to go and join the military. Those were my two things. And then I come out of high school. I haven't applied to college. I didn't end up going to the military. So I'm out of high school and I'm just working. You know, I'm working. And this is this is before I end up getting the two jobs I had today. So I was working at Big Five Sporting Goods and um, Albertsons. And let me tell you, dude, working for Albertsons fucking sucked. Like, fucking sucked like I was working at Albertsons I worked at Albertsons maybe for a month before I got the call for my uh, new job now about being a production assistant and uh, being a part-time sports writer for the newspaper here I fucking hated at Albertsons dude like I worked customer service and I just like people that worked there like there are some people that worked there for like 20 plus years and I'm like how can you possibly hate your life enough that you want to lock yourself in here for 20 plus years. That was kind of the waking call about me coming back to YouTube really happened at Albertsons. It was like, Treep, what do you want to do? Do you want to work at Albertsons for the rest of your life, work a modane job like this? Or do you want to go out and make shit happen and try and build your own business and try to build your own platform and do that? And I said, you know what? I want to build my own platform. I want to do that. So I ended up getting the new job. Um, in August of 2017 so I get the job in August of 2017 and I don't make videos until May of 2018 that's when I come back because I, I get these new jobs and I'm enjoying them I'm having a good time and then I just keep thinking to myself man I it was mostly I seen um UCF Jaguar is really kind of UCF Jaguar really kind of I would say inspired me or like you know motivated me to come back uh, he personally didn't do anything but I seen him making videos and he was doing really good and I was like man I miss that I miss making Jaguar YouTube videos I miss interacting with the community on YouTube you know I'm pretty active in like on Twitter and stuff like I like interacting with the Twitter community as well but like the YouTube community and just everything man like I missed it and I was like you know what I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna go hard and that's what I did. I went hard. I've been posting six videos a week for since May. So now it's June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Seven months, man. I've been going. I've only been going for seven months, and we've gained 350 subscribers uh, up on this bitch. So we're currently sitting at 637 uh, subscribers. And I, that means the world to me, but I know we can do better, and I know we're going to do better because... It's not all going to be Jaguar stuff. You know, like, that's what this channel started to be. And I was really stubborn about it. Like, this channel is for Jacksonville Jaguar football only. That's all it's for. But the more and more I think about it and the more and more I consider things, I'm not going to be making money off this website if I just stick with the Jags. Like, I know it's possible, um... But, you know, I want to get, I'm getting my degree, I'm going to college now, uh, finally applied, you know, years later, two years out of high school, and I'm like, I'm going to do this, I want to work where I want to work full time, I want to make better money. And, you know, this YouTube shit too is also important to me. And like, the videos I'm making now, 
like talking to you and telling you stories like that's not going to change this format isn't going to change but there are some videos that i have in mind that are going to take me weeks to edit maybe like like days or weeks to edit but i have a whole lot of ideas that i think are complete money and i think that are going to work out and you guys are really going to enjoy it and i think we're going to get a lot of new people a lot of new faces that aren't just jaguar fans but the Jaguar fan community is really, really going to help me get this channel right where it needs to be and, you know, really help my dreams uh, come true. Because there's going to be new camera equipment, new editing software, new microphones, like everything. Everything's new. I got so many new ideas and I can't wait to share it with you guys. My YouTube story has been very, very inconsistent, you know, from 2000 to 2007 to now. You know, a lot of people by now, if you know, if I was consistent with it, maybe I'd be way higher than what I'd be at now. But, you know, everything happens for a reason and we're consistent now. And everything is going to go for the better. Everything's going to be fine. Treep from Treep Talks is going to be talked about worldwide and not just for Jacksonville Jaguar football news and things like that. We got new content. We got shit on the way. Everything is going to happen. Everything's going to be perfect. And you guys are going to know the name, Treeb from Treeb Talks. And that was Storytime with Treeb, Episode 2. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, at Treeb Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trevon Pixley. And follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Treeb Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel. Six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, do have a great day.